On today's episode, Tesla Semi embarrasses its electric competition, China prepares their roads for self-driving cars, and Tesla is looking to hire a pre-production manager for their Tesla bot. The Tesla Semi has finished a massive real-world testing phase in the Run On Less event, and the results show off the vehicle's capabilities better than any advertisement could. Organized by the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, the Run On Less event is a challenge intended to gather data on the current efficacy of electric Class 8 transport trucks and compare them to each other and, of course, more traditional diesel-powered tractors. PepsiCo entered three of their new Tesla semis from their fleet in California, and over the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing the results of smaller parts of the challenge, but even those snapshots of the test have greatly impressed industry observers. And now that the course is finished, the results are staggering. During the most grueling day of the competition, a PepsiCo Tesla semi started with a full charge and moved a total of 1,076 miles, stopping for only three quick 750 kilowatt fast charging sessions. The first and last sessions were very short, only able to bring the semi up to 47% and 52% charge respectively. But the charge at midday corresponded with the driver's half hour break and so was able to charge the vehicle up to 89% of its total capacity and all of this with a full load of about 70,000 pounds. More on that in a minute. The semi was able to keep up this marathon due largely to its regenerative braking capability. When letting off the accelerator, the semi's motor reverses, slowing the vehicle and using that resistance to generate electricity to extend the charge of the batteries. During some of the hillier parts of its run during the event, the semi was able to more or less keep the same charge it had from beginning to end. Coupled with its ability to fast charge, the only entrant to demonstrate that ability, and Tesla was the clear frontrunner for the run on less competition. And we do mean clear. The closest competitor for the whole event was Watt EV's Nikola Trey BEV, which was able to travel about 255 miles per day, less than half of PepsiCo's 574 miles per day. And it only gets worse from there. With the entrance from more traditional companies like Freightliner's e Cascadia and Volvo's VNR Electric, only able to get about 180 miles per day each. Now let's talk about load, because the competition didn't pull any punches there. Earlier, we said the Tesla Semi pulled about 70,000 pounds the whole time. This is about the industry standard. The limit for Class 8 vehicles being around 82,000 pounds of gross vehicle weight during operation. Every entrant had to pull this type of load if they could manage it, and the Tesla Semi had zero issues managing it. In order to stay efficient, tractor operators typically shuffle loads around as opposed to simply delivering. They start the day with a full trailer, deliver it to a location and swap loads, grabbing another product meant to be brought to the next location on the route. This way, the fleet maximizes the amount of time spent with a load, which saves on both money and the driver's mental health. Ask any of your trucker friends if they enjoy hauling an empty trailer to see what we mean. So just to sum it up, for this entire competition, PepsiCo's Tesla Semis were the only trucks in the lineup that performed to industry standard. You can see why Pepsi is very happy with the results. And like we said earlier, there's really no better way to showcase a vehicle's capabilities than a competition like this. Tesla can have their engineers or Elon himself stand on stage and say that the Semi is a match for any diesel truck on the market, but it can't compare to the whole industry watching this bright blue electric tractor do exactly what a diesel rig does, but with no fuel costs. Well, different fuel costs. And with California's government set to phase out internal combustion truck sales by 2036, this competition finished just in time. PepsiCo has already said that they were looking to replace their whole delivery fleet with Tesla semis, but after this event, you can bet Tesla's going to have a hard time filling orders. Now, before we jump into the heart of today's content, let's chat about the role language plays in our professional lives, especially on a platform as global as YouTube. Big thanks to Babbel for not just being instrumental in this journey, but also for sponsoring this video. As we collaborate and create content with people from every corner of the globe, the need to communicate effectively becomes paramount. 
That directed me to Spanish. While I always had a basic understanding, Babbel became the bridge to a more fluent professional interaction. Here are a couple of Spanish phrases that became crucial for my professional interactions. Puede completar esto para la próxima semana. This translates to can you complete this by next week, an essential phrase when working on timelines and project deadlines. Puede compartirme su portafolio, meaning can you share your portfolio with me, great for when you're looking to collaborate or hire and want to review past work. But why Babbel, you ask? Their platform is shaped by genuine experts in language education, ensuring an authentic learning experience. Their live sessions transport you straight into an immersive classroom environment, and the peace of mind that comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee, well, simply invaluable. For all the budding global communicators out there, here's a special offer. Click the link below and get a massive 60% off on Babbel, dive into the world of languages, and open doors to global opportunities. I'd love to hear your thoughts. How can mastering a new language boost your career or personal growth? Share away in the comments below. China is looking to prepare their roadways for self-driving vehicles and their solution to the problem of mixing manually piloted traffic with self-driving units could literally pave the way for Tesla's FSD rollout in the country. Tesla has been working hard to prepare for the potential debut of their full self-driving beta, something that is still hanging in the air. At last check, Tesla has been setting up a China-based operations team that would be interfacing with local government authorities to help the process along. China has some very strict driving laws that don't yet have any provisions for autonomous driving vehicles, and so whether or not Tesla's FSD program is able to operate on Chinese roads depends entirely on how quickly their regulations can be updated. However, it's not like Chinese authorities are against the idea. In fact, they've already been testing an entire infrastructure system for self-driving vehicles. Back in early July, the government of Suzhou in the Jiangsu province began upgrading a local stretch of road to become a smart expressway. At the moment, this 56-kilometer stretch of road is mostly a laboratory filled with over 270 sets of laser and millimeter wave radars, cameras, and antennas to assist in metric gathering. Eventually, however, it looks like this sort of solution might be used across the country, solving one of the biggest issues for self-driving vehicles on North American roads, mixing with manual and pedestrian traffic. People tend to act in erratic ways that are difficult for automated systems to predict, so a dedicated roadway sounds like it would be a great option. Currently, the road is marked as being usable only for level 4 autonomous driving vehicles, which Tesla's FSD is not, only considered about a level 2. Currently, there are only a couple of companies even testing level 4 systems, and only in low-speed environments. However, China's testing of their current stretch of road requires the use of systems that can handle lane changes, ramp entry, and overtaking, all of which are already in the FSD's capabilities. So, who knows, with some work, China might relax their requirements for the use of this expressway. It's a great solution to traffic mixing with non-self-driving cars, and seems like a much safer route, if a bit expensive. Creating a whole new bunch of infrastructure just for autonomous vehicles is definitely not something you'd see in North America, at least. A new job opening posted by Tesla indicates that the Optimus robot project is moving on to some pre-production work, or proto-production as they're calling it. Proto-production supervisor, humanoid actuators, Teslabot, reads the title of the job listing. The position will be a leadership one, having a team of 15 technicians to organize, but also working with the actuator program manager to build plans for Tesla's internal actuator project. Back in July, we got a quick explanation from CEO Elon Musk about what had been holding up the project during the Q2 earnings call. He explained that while the initial tests with Optimus had attempted to use off-the-shelf parts, the team quickly discovered that they had to design their own actuators as the off-the-shelf units weren't sensitive enough. And then in September, we got our first look at the results of that work with a video showing some extremely impressive and intricate work being done by one of the company's active bots. Actuators are the motors, the drive units, and gear train of any robotic hardware, so it makes sense that Tesla would be putting a lot of effort into developing state-of-the-art units for their bots. Actuators in the joints and manipulation points like the hands have to be finely tuned to avoid juddering, shaky motion. So, 
posting a job like a production supervisor whose entire role will be to create and fine-tune the process by which these actuators will eventually be mass-produced is an indication that Tesla is close enough to being finished with the design of their actuators that they can begin that sort of planning. But this job will not be easy, even by Tesla standards. Actuators are very precise, finely tuned parts, and in a robot like Optimus, many of the smaller parts of the gear train will be quite tiny. It's also unclear exactly how Tesla plans on scaling up the production of their actuators. They could attempt to automate the process, which carries its own challenges, or they could stick with what they've been doing up until now, which is using highly skilled technicians to hand make each one. It's very likely that the company intends on automating at least part of this process, but exactly how they achieve this will be the job of whoever lands this production supervisor gig. From the job description, it looks like Tesla is focusing on streamlining the current process while looking for opportunities to prepare for larger scale production, so it'll likely be some time before we see a working production line of these units. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.